Hi and welcome to Congruent Triangles. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jot available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So just to start with a definition of the word congruent. Um, if shapes are congruent, they are the same shape and size and all corresponding sides and angles are equal. So when it comes to triangles, um, we have a few uh, rules that we can use in order to prove that triangles are congruent. So two triangles are congruent if any of the following rules is true. So ASA, the angle side angle rule. That means the two angles with a side between them must be the same in both triangles. And so here, what we can see is we have a 32 degree angle and a 38 degree angle and the side which is in between them is seven centimeters. If we compare it with the other triangle, they're not in the same orientation, but still we have a 32 degree angle and a 38 degree angle with a seven, seven centimeter side in between them. And therefore we can be sure that those two triangles are congruent. Also, we have the SAS rule, side angle side. That means if we have two sides of a triangle, with the angle between them, then we can, uh, and they are the same, then we can say that the two triangles are congruent. So again, what we have here, the two sides, a nine centimeter side and a five centimeter side with an angle of 41 degrees in between. Well, we can see we also have that in this case, a five centimeter side and a nine centimeter side with the same angle in between. Now, in this case, this is actually a reflection. We flip the shape over, but they are congruent because they have the side angle side properties. Next is side side side, um, SSS, where all three sides are the same length. Well, if all three sides are the same length in the three triangles, they must be the same, uh, same triangle. And so in the same order, we have eight, eight, five, and we have in this one, eight, eight, they must be the same triangle, the same size, the same angles, because all of the sides are the same length. And finally, we have the RHS um, rule, which is the right angle, hypotenuse and side. Basically, this is Pythagoras' theorem. As long as Pythagoras' theorem holds, their, their triangles must be the same. Therefore, in this case, we have a right angle and we have a hypotenuse of five. And then we have a side. Well, because we have this side of four centimeters, we can calculate the other side. It will be five squared, take away four squared, all square rooted. Um, and five squared is 25, four squared is 16. So we're looking for the square root of nine, which is three. So this side must be three centimeters. And if we compare it with the other triangle, we have the hypotenuse at five centimeters, we have the right angle, and then we have a side. We have a side of three centimeters, which we know matches this one. And also the four centimeter side, well, that must be the same as this one. If we did the same again using Pythagoras, we would have um, five squared take away three squared, all square rooted, which would be once again, square root of 16, which will be four, telling us that the other side must be four centimeters. So uh, what we're going to look at here is um, we're going to compare each of the triangles to the blue triangle um, and decide whether or not we have congruent triangles or we can prove that they are congruent uh, based on the information that we're given. Um, now in the first triangle, the blue triangle, the first thing I'm actually going to do is just work out what this extra angle is because we've been given two angles, 110 degrees and 34 degrees. And as this is a triangle, we can always work out the third angle um, by adding together what we already have. So um, 110 plus 34, and then subtracting it from 180, as we know that the angles must add up to 180. So that last angle is 36. And the reason I'm doing that is that some of the triangles may well use an angle of 36. Um, and even though it's not given in the original triangle, we should be able to prove whether or not it, uh, it is in those triangles. So if you have a look here, we have a 36, and a 36 and so that is using the extra angle which we didn't already know but we could calculate 
So as we go through, all we want to do is we want to decide whether any of the three, uh, four rules that we looked at before will work. So we had um, side, angle, side. We had angle, side, angle. We had side, side, side. And we had right angle, hypotenuse, side. Now there is one of these which I can discount immediately, and that is right angle hypotenuse side because none of these are right angle triangles and um, so it's only going to be side angle side angle side angle or side 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 and again I can also discount side 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 because I don't know all three sides of this triangle I only know two of them and so I must be looking at either side angle side or angle side angle to work in order for this to be correct so in this case the first one we have an angle of 34 degrees in between two sides so if side angle side is going to work then this must be repeated in the original triangle so there is the angle that we've been given 34 degrees and around it it has a three centimeter side and a six centimeter side this matches exactly with what we have in this triangle and therefore side angle side is correct that one is congruent Next, we have a 3 centimeter side, a 110 degree angle, and a 34 degree angle. Well, if we have a look at this, um, we have a 110 degree angle and a 34 degree angle, which matches to this. And then we have a 3 centimeter side. Now, let's just take a quick look at where that 3 centimeter side is. The 3 centimeter side is between. The 110 degree angle and the 34 degree angle in this case it is not in the same place it should be here if this was a congruent triangle and therefore we cannot prove congruence here this one is not congruent Next, we have a 36 degree angle, a 34 degree angle, and a six centimeter side. Well, let's have a look. There's our 36 and our 34, which matches with what we have here, 36 and 34. And the side of six centimeters is between them. The side of six centimeters is between them. Do we have congruence? Well, here, yes, we do. We have congruence. And we have it because of angle, side, angle. And then lastly, we have a 36 degree angle, a 110 degree angle, and a 34 degree angle. Let's see if that matches with what we've been told. Well, we had a 36 degree angle, a 110 degree angle, and a 34 degree angle. So all of the angles match. And so we would assume that this is congruent. But neither of these rules say angle 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 they all require a side in this case we don't know anything about the lengths of this shape and so we cannot say that it is congruent if we don't know any lengths we can't be sure of congruence but what we can say here is that those two triangles are similar the, uh, the triangle that we have here with no lengths drawn on it may well just be an enlargement um, of the original triangle but we cannot say that for certain that they are congruent so next we have a written question here so we haven't got any diagrams but we might draw some if uh, if we feel the need so Benny and Carlo both draw triangles with a side of six centimeters an angle of 80 degrees and another side of seven centimeters Benny says the triangles must be congruent Carlo says they might not be who is correct well, in this case, um, I will give you one little tip. If this was an exam question, um, who is correct? Generally, it will be the person who is suggesting that they might not. Um, or if someone is asked, are they correct? Usually the answer is no. And the reason here is that if we were to draw a triangle just as they stated, so a side of six centimeters um, here, and then an angle of 80 degrees, so we measure our angle, and then we draw a line of seven centimeters. That is what it would suggest we would do in that order. And then we would finish off the triangle to look like this. 
roughly. But that is not exactly the statement that was made. All it said was that there was a six centimetre side, an 80 degree angle and a seven centimetre side. And so what we could have done is drawn a six centimetre side. We could have measured 80 degrees Again, roughly about there and then the seven centimeter side may well the seven centimeter side may well have actually been the side over here so where our 80 degree angle is here the seven centimeter side might be on the other side of the triangle and therefore this is not necessarily uh, two congruent triangles we don't necessarily have them drawn in the same uh, same spaces and therefore, um, Carlo would be the correct person here. They may not be congruent. And uh, the last example here is going to be a little bit of um, geometric proof, trying to prove that um, two triangles are congruent to each other. So we are told um, that ABC is an isosceles triangle. M is the midpoint of BC. We need to prove that triangle ABM is congruent to triangle ACM. So, in this question, we have not been given any lengths or any angles whatsoever, but we are being asked to prove that we have congruence. How can we do that? Well, the key here comes from the type of triangles we are dealing with. We are dealing with ABC as an isosceles triangle. And so because it's an isosceles triangle, two sides must be the same length. So AB must be equal to AC. And so straight away, I'm going to write that down, that AB equals AC. And so that means I have a side which is equal in both cases. Because it is an isosceles triangle, the other thing we know about isosceles triangles is that the base angles are equal and therefore, this angle, ABM, must be equal to this triangle, uh, this angle, ACM. And so angle ABM equals angle ACM. And then M is the midpoint. Midpoint is a very important word because what it means is that this line, BC, has been split in half, which means that actually this length must be the same as this length. And so CM must equal BM. And what that's actually given us is one of our congruence rules. We have side, angle, side, side, angle, side. And therefore, it must be congruent because side, angle, side holds. And so that rule uh, holds for this triangle and therefore it must be congruent. Now we could have gone about this in a lot of different ways as well. If I just take off the additions that I made to the diagram. There is another key factor here, is that if you split an isosceles triangle in half, one thing you also create are right angled triangles. And so in this case, you would have your hypotenuse for each, uh, each of the triangles, and those hypotenuses must be the same, uh, same length. And also, because this is split in half, we have a side, but we also have a shared side here which must be the same in both cases so we could also use r h s in this case and um, finally another rule that would show that they definitely work well let's ignore the fact that we said they were right angle triangles we've just shown that we have sides which are the same a side and a side a side and a side and a side and a side and so we could even use side, side, side. If we just show that we are using one of the uh, rules that prove congruence, we just need to show that those things are true. 
and we're going to end with the exam question and this one came from the OCR paper in June 2018 and it was on foundation and higher paper 3 and the diagram below shows two triangles not to scale we need to prove the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ACD now in this case we have triangles and the first thing we should always be looking at here if you have triangles and you know two angles let's work out the third angle so we have 80 and 56 80 plus 56 equals 136 180 take away 136 well that is going to be 4 and 4 44 so this angle here is 44 degrees in the other triangle we have 80 and 44 if we add those together we get 124 180 take away 124 well that is 56 now what that's done straight away is it's helped that uh, helped suggest that there may be congruence because we have um, all of the angles being the same but currently that only means that it's uh, similar we need one of our four rules and what we can say is AC AC is a shared side and therefore AC is in both triangles and so what we can say is that angle B A C equals angle A C D we've proved that we can also say that angle A C B equals angle um, C A D and we can also say that side AC equals side AC because they are shared and therefore what we've just shown is that angle side angle rules and so we can say that those two triangles are congruent because of angle side angle